Why are we angry? Well, for me, it's two main reasons running simultaneously. It's the test crazy regime, and it's this enforced, aca enforced academization. Let's just take the academization for a start. We know that they have no argument for it. They have been told over and over again by neutral interviewers, right-wing interviewers, backbench Tories, the NUT, the ATL, by everybody, that you have no basis for this to, to be done. So they know that, but they're still going ahead with it. And this is a theft. These buildings, this land, these schools, they're ours. They belong to ours. They were fought for by our forebears in the 1850s and 60s. It's that old. When the Education Act came in in 1870, yes, it was for us, babe, it was for us. <laughs> That's right. They said, we want schools for us just like the Toffs had. And they will belong to us. And actually, they put in a more democratic structure that was sadly abolished at the beginning of the 20th century of the school boards. If you walk around London, you'll see the sign up. It says SLB, School Board for London. That's what they gave us. That's what they fought for their hours. And they're taking them away from us on these so-called 125-year leases. Anyone who looks at long leases in buildings and in houses or in shops or wherever, there are enormous rights given to people who have leases. We are in great danger of losing these billions of pounds worth of property, if that's what you want to call it, billions of pounds worth of schools and land that is there for our benefit, for the use of our children, so that our children can be educated. They're stealing it from us. And that is the, my very first point, one of the first points that makes me so, so very angry. The second, and it's just as important, we have to remember that when they set up the education system, this was in order to provide education for all. That's what it was, and it was a balance between national government and local government in order to make that necessary, essential, and legal. That's what was won. It was a victory. It was a victory for democracy, that everybody had free education. It was a legal requirement. The academy system does not have that requirement. Yes? As a system, it has a great big hole in it called no legal requirement. That's why if you look at the white paper, it's somewhere around about clause four, I forgot now exactly, but in clause four you'll see quite clearly that the government know this and so local authorities, these people who they vilify and starve of cash, and who effectively we know, like Mari Celeste's all over the country with hardly an educationist left in them, are going to be, that their legal requirement is to mop up round the academies to find those people who somehow are not in school. And then supposedly the local authority is either going to try and squeeze them into the academies, though they have no legal control over the academies, okay, or to provide units, they already provide PRUs, uh, pupil referral units, though even some of them are being academised even as we speak, okay? We do not know where those children, whether they're vulnerable, at risk, challenging, or any, any other label that you want to put on them, uh, for the moment we do not know if there is full-scale, 100% academisation, where they, where they will go. The provision is not there at the very moment at which they're taking the money out of local authorities. And a little report appeared online and has now been withdrawn from a rather shadowy authority called the Centre for High Performance. You can shadow them and chase them around. These are the kinds of people that circle around education at the moment, looking for work, trying to drum up work. And they did an analysis of 160 academies to find out what turns round a failing school. Point four on their list was exclude poor quality students. What in heaven's name is going on that we're talking about human beings as poor quality? No doubt they're going to defend that as some kind of ironic statement or other, you know, very postmodern joke or something. We're not laughing, guys. You're talking about our children. Whether they're, whether they're marked as SEN, as special educational needs, whether they're marked as vulnerable or challenging, whether they're marked about, or whether. For all we know, they just didn't do very well in some tests or exams, which is, you know, there'll be people here who will know that their kids have been challenged by academies because they're not performing well enough. The academies can push them out. 
And this, this bunch, the Centre for, for High Performance, even the word performance, I thought what we did was we go to school in order to grow and develop, not to bloody perform. Okay, what is this? It's like cars? Yeah? This is like Jeremy Clarkson measure of, of, of school children. It's a good performance car, it's a good performance child. This is the kind of language that this whole academisation is getting infected with. So that's two reasons, if you like, but there are many others why people, which people will talk about, about why I am angry, you are angry about academisation. And now the test crazy regime. Okay, we have to remember that some of these tests have no basis whatsoever. I've drawn attention, others have drawn attention to the SPAG test. In fact, they're so ashamed of calling it SPAG, they've changed the name. There's people in the DfE, they need time and money and things to do things. So they changed the name from SPAG to GPS. They haven't got anything else to do, so there we are. So that's what they did. So now it's not SPAG, it's GPS. Many of the questions on those papers, my son is doing them, year six son. When you look at them, they have no basis. They're ambiguous, they're full of redundant, useless knowledge. Some of it you cannot justify. I can go through it, just take the very first question on last year's test, or it's a sample test that asks you to put prefixes on the front of words, and there's only supposed to be a right, wrong answer. That was the basis on which the SPAG test came in, that it only gave right, wrong answers, and you can go through those questions and find double possibilities, triple possibilities of what the children can answer, ambiguities, the test is not valid or reliable. The two criteria that we use to measure testing, I'm not much in favour of any, any testing really, but anyway, that this test, these, these tests are not valid and they're not reliable. On that first question I'm talking about with the prefixes, you have to find a prefix to put on front of frost, and of course you can say defrost or refrost. They gave you D and re. You see children trying to do that, my son getting muddled, which is it? And then when I said this to the uh, linguist who was partly responsible for the test, he said, oh, well, you work it out by deduction from the other questions. I said, oh, it's an intelligence test, is it not a grammar test? This is the kind of cynicism that goes on behind these testing. They've created categories that nobody in the world of linguistics knows about, the so-called fronted adverbial. <laughs> nobody knows what it is. Okay. They're just basically invented it. basically means anything you want to chuck in front of a chunk of a sentence. And you can bung anything in there, a single word like happily or, you know, when I go out or with my hat on. It's all a fronted adverbial, even if it isn't a verbial, even if it's adjectival. That's the kind of problem that they put there. They've got this category called subordinate clauses. Well, in actual fact, many linguists say, well, they don't exist anyway. All you've got is clauses. You've got subordinate clauses and conjoint clauses. There ain't really any difference. The kids are learning off mnemonics. Fanboys, fanboys. What have I got to do, believe it or not? Fanboys, for, and, nor, uh, to, fan, fanboys, be, because. Yeah, and they're sitting there. It's got nothing to do with grammar. It's got whether you remember a bloody mnemonic. Yes? This is the kind of test that they've forced on the kids. Uh, would have been this year if we hadn't blown their cover. But that's another matter for the Key Stage 1. But it's definitely going ahead for the moment for Key Stage 2. But what is the link between all this test crazy regime with the huge uh, tailback that from the tests to the pretests to the booklets without the pretests to the sentences that the children are doing in year fours and fives, even though the test isn't until six? What's the why, why has it come in? What is the obsession with it? Well, if you have in the back of your mind as a person in government full scale academisation, there is no national curriculum. Yes? If there is no national curriculum, how, as a government obsessed with controlling teachers, parents, and children, how do you do it? You create this test crazy regime that is only there, not, not for the basis of giving children useful knowledge, but in order to test teachers and schools. That's what it's there for. So our children take the pain, take the stress, in order that the government monitors schools in the way that they want to, with these arbitrary yes-no answers, even when they're not valid. So they're measuring teachers, measuring schools, with invalid testing, which impacts directly on our children. That's what's going on. But when they've got full-scale academies, that's their plan, this is how they control the curriculum. Yes? Yeah. Because they haven't got a national curriculum for academies and free school academies. Yes? So that's why they're ramping up the testing more and more. This is their plan behind it. 
so that in actual fact, teachers will be controlled by that rather than by the national curriculum. So that's what they have in place. So it's fantastic you're here. We need a parents campaign to be supporting the teachers. We need the teachers to be supporting the parents. We cannot go forwards in these campaigns separated from each other. We have to talk to each other, support each other. People will take actions in their localities. Sometimes things will be national. Sometimes things will be quite individual, but we have to move forward to oppose the two things simultaneously. The test-crazy regime and full-scale academisation. Thanks very much. Thank you.